Recording in progress. No, I wanted to talk a little bit about a cup of trembling, and uh, and of course, as the as the world is on fire, we've got uh, you know Russia and uh, in the Ukraine, and we've got Israel and and Gaza and Lebanon and now Iran, and so we're looking at a lot of battles that are going on, and then we've got the culture war battles that are going on in the United States and of course in Canada and we just had an election here in BC as well and things are really divided and a house divided cannot stand that's an important thing we need unity we need brothers and sisters together we need people united in uh, in Christ Jesus and more than ever now what we need to do is we need to look at the good book the the book that is said stood the test of time that has given us hope and life and answers to all things, but also pointed to a time such as now when nations would rise against nations and there would be wars around the world. Now, we, we don't like that. Nobody likes that. But we cannot stop that it says it will happen. So, but I don't like that. Well, God's ways are higher than our ways. And we are grateful for his guidance in times like this, the trouble that is going on in the world. And when we see the scriptures and the guidance that are there, now more than ever is the time to come to the Lord. Now more than ever, is the time to make sure that we are here in uh, in the fellowship of the Lord. And, uh, you know, whether we're watching this video at home, uh, afterwards on YouTube, or whether we are here live and in person or on Zoom today, everybody needs to get on their knees and pray. Pray. Build yourself up on your most holy faith. Pray in the Holy Spirit. Tell your friends, your neighbors, your loved ones, your family members, now is the time to come to the Lord because we look around and we don't know how much longer it's going to be. But we do know the Bible does say he's coming back. We will rise and meet him in the air. We will be there. The world will be cleaned up. There will be a judgment and we need that more than ever. So, brothers and sisters, we need to be unified. We need to come together. We need to love one another. We need to shine that out. We need to be there for each other. You know, right now, uh, you know, as Miguel said, he's having some challenges in Bucerias. There is, is uh, you know, we talk about the wars here, but just local to his own hometown, there is troubles there. You know, drugs going on and other crime going on and and praise the Lord that what a miracle testimony that is the protection of the Lord that he could be hit by a motorcycle but he's alive he's alive and he's here to to build us up and edify and and we're coming to you Miguel and we will be there very soon very soon and uh, you come stay with us at in uh, in Paradise Village and and be protected and enjoy the sanctuary of the Lord and we will preach and we will see people come to the Lord. Now is the time to repent. Now is the time to come to the Lord. Now is the time for healing signs and wonders. And yet people are not here today. We realize that some people have work and of course afterwards we're going to go to the hospital to visit uh, Angie and Magdalena in, in the hospital. Praise the Lord, they're okay. We had prayer last night, and it looks like Angie is uh, is recovering. So these are good things, but these are things that we need to do. And as I've said uh, on uh, Wednesday night, and certainly at our camp that we just had recently in California, people are free to choose. People are free to choose who they will serve. And we can choose to get together and grow stronger in the love of God, or we can choose to be separate and draw apart. 
and draw apart. Brothers and sisters, we need to make that right choice more and more as we see the day approaching. So Isaiah 51 and verse 17. Isaiah 51 and verse 17. And we will get a few thoughts here out of this. I, I love Isaiah. Very uh, prophetic as we see the fulfillment of that in Jesus. It's like you read the prophecies in Isaiah, and you just see how all of it comes together to point out to uh, the return of Jesus. So in verse 17, it says, Awake, awake, stand up, O Jerusalem, which has drunk at the hand of the Lord the cup of his fury. Thou hast drunken the dregs of the cup of trembling and wrung them out. In other words, around Jerusalem, as we see right now, we've got Muslim, Christian, Jewish people, and uh, and secular people all surrounding Jerusalem, and uh, and and the, the the cup of trembling that has been there for a thousand of years prophesies in Isaiah the the conquering and the reconquering and and everything back and forth and now everything swirling around there as we see it today, and, and you can read through eighteen, nineteen, twenty. 21 that fills it all in, but we'll skip down to verse 22, where it says, Thus saith the Lord, and thy God that pleases the cause of his people, behold, I have taken out thine hand the cup of trembling, even the dregs of the cup of my fury, thou shalt no more drink it again, talking about a protection there. You know, but I will put into the hand of them that afflict them, which have saith to them, my soul, bow down that we may go over, and thou hast laid the body as the ground and the street, etc. And they wept over it. So uh, we didn't put that scripture up there, but you can read that on your own time. So this is the the thing that we have is in prophecy, it talks about all of these things. And, and this is the beauty of it, is that we we look at the book, we look at the words of God and we see this happen after it was prophesied that it would happen. And then this happened, pointing to a time when the Messiah, Jesus, would come on the earth. And we see how he walked and he talked and he showed a better way. To the sheep, he had compassion, he had love. Come unto me, all you that are heavily burdened. Anybody, lots of people burdened, you know, struggling, having to go to work and deliver packages, driving around every day, you know, where is this place? Where is that place? Taking the boxes, delivering them, walking around the hospital, cleaning up. Caring for patients that are, oh, you're too rough on us, and, you know, and you have to deal with all of these these uh, these things that are there. And uh, you know, I'm just looking around here, you know, the things that Magdalena at her, her age helping out, caring for for uh, Angela and and John Situ is uh, right now working hard, and uh, you know, Shujana, Narveen, Miguel. Uh, all the things that are going on around the place within our fellowship. And just to see that, to know that Jesus is there for each and every one of us. And so we've got to remember that. We have to remind each other how blessed it is. is. And just when we're feeling down and out, when we're feeling, you know, overwhelmed, ah, I don't know if I can make it. It's, you know, how are we going to do it? Well, again, we've got the scriptures. And I know, you know, I, I've been there. I've had struggles, had the pain, the anxiety. How am I going to pay this bill? How am I going to do this? Or, you know, of course, in the, in the, just the day-to-day -day living of the fellowship, it's, you know, what about this? What about that? Or this person? Or, you know, we got a lot each and every one of us. But, you know, it's when you get, I, I guess where I'm going with it on that 
was when I was in California at the camp. You know, I saw Jordan's mom there and I saw all the other brothers and sisters from Vancouver, from Seattle, from Georgia, from Los Angeles. And we were all together. And it, it was a nice sized group, a really nice sized group. We had a full hall, music, singing, and uh, a lot of fellowship. There was good food, really, really good food. And of course, sunshine. You know, as we got down there, it started, as we were leaving, it started to rain here. So Anthony always likes to pick, it's beginning to rain. And uh, of course, the rain is the Holy Spirit being poured out, the preparing things. But as we were down there in the warmth and the sunshine, we were thinking and praying for each and every one of you, as we know that everybody back here was faithfully uh, getting together and supporting one another. And, and that's wonderful. But it's just a reminder of what we have, how special it can be. We need more people here. We need, uh, you know, we'd love to see more people come out. So, you know, why don't they come out? Oh, you're small, this, that, I'm busy on a Sunday. I've got it, this or that. We get it. We get it. But if you make that priority to be here, you will receive a blessing. If you make the priority, just the effort to join us on Zoom, you will be blessed. You will receive a blessing. I know it. But we look at it and we go, wow, there's a lot going on. Zechariah 12.2 also talks about it. In prophecy. Zechariah 12, 2. It says, Behold, I will make Jerusalem a cup of trembling unto all the people round about when they shall be in the siege, both against Judah and Jerusalem. And, you know, whether we like it or not, that's what's going on. That's what's happening. Everything's all around. Let's wipe them out. Wipe them out. Well, that's what the Bible says. It says in Zechariah, that's what they want. They want to get rid of it. They want to get rid of God. Eliminate God. That's going to be the answer. As soon as we get rid of the Christians, as soon as we get rid of people that believe in God, then the world will be perfect. We'll all be united. We'll all sit around saying, Kumbaya, hug each other, love each other, and just have this joyous time of non-division. Well, that's totally inaccurate because uh, of so many things that I could point at. But I will just say this. The unity comes through Jesus. The unity comes around the Holy Spirit. The unity comes around the communion table when we realize that everything we have is a gift of God and everything that we offer is a gift of God because of what Jesus did. So that cup of trembling is just a prophecy of things that are going to happen. So then what should we do? What do we have to do? Well, we got to rise. We've got to shine, as it says in Isaiah 60. Isaiah 60. And in verse 1. Arise, shine, for thy light has come, and the glory of the Lord has risen upon thee. For behold, the darkness shall cover the earth, and gross darkness the people. But the Lord shall arise upon thee, and his glory shall be seen upon thee. Wow, that's beautiful encouragement. <laughs> so, like I say, any one of us at any moment could just, like, I can't do it. I'm losing it. It's tough. I turn on the news. It's negative. I've got a tough time at work. I've got a tough time with my family, with relationships, people telling me, you know, in my own family, why are you doing this or why are you doing that or don't do this or don't look? I'm going to follow what the Word of God says, and uh, and realize that whatever darkness is there, Jesus is the light. He's going to shine upon me. His Holy Spirit has come down, and is is settled here that we can do that. You know, 
you, you read in Isaiah 61 over, just take a look at that. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me. Set the captives free. Recovering sight to the blind, the acceptable year of the Lord. Repeated in Luke chapter 4. This is the encouragement. This is the prophecy fulfilled. People can say this about that. But when we read the Old Testament, the book of the law and the prophets, everything points to the coming today of the return of Jesus. As we see, it's all right there. It says that a, a man uh, uh, would be born of a virgin in poverty. He would live and he'd walk among us. He would suffer and die like a sheep to the slaughter, silent. That he would preach the acceptable year of the Lord, that there would be healing signs and wonders as a result of that miraculous birth, that he would suffer and die, as I said, is something that, okay, well, what about this? But the grave would be empty. It couldn't hold him that he would rise and become alive again. Well, that divides a lot of people, but we believe it's true. And we have enough evidence of that, as I said. So now we look at that and we go, okay, the Bible has said this would happen, and it did. The Bible said this would happen, and it did. The Bible said this would happen, and it, and it did. You know, now if I was a mathematician, I would say, and I don't have those stats for you, but the odds of one prophecy being fulfilled, you'd go random chance. The odds of two prophecies, okay, three, mm -hmm. four. You know, when we talk about 30 prophecies definitively and accurately fulfilled and one man, Jesus. When we look at the history of the nations, how uh, this would happen and this nation would conquer, this nation would conquer, this nation, and then eventually we would see these other nations rising up. The accuracy and the predictive uh, nature of the Bible, saying that these things would happen. Again, it's so accurate that we look at it and we go, we can't ignore it. To ignore it is just, burying our head in the sand or brushing it off and just saying, you know, I'm going to, I'm going to whistle as I walk through the graveyard. As some people would say, nothing going on. I'm just going to walk away. But as I said, it's one that when we're talking to people, you, you can't ignore it. I just, you know, when people say, I don't want to read the Bible because then I might have to do what it says. And okay. All right. I get that. It's sort of, you're called before the judge and, oh, I didn't know, right? The, you know, the lack, uh, well, I didn't know that was a crime. <laughs> you know, I didn't know that was against the law. And that's what people are hoping. Maybe I get off with a, with a warning, a slap on the wrist. But it says, no, you, you, two things. Number one, there is going to be a judgment. Number two, you can avoid the judgment by coming to the Lord now. By being baptized, by being spirit-filled, and embracing and feeling all the miracles and the love and the vision that God has for each and every one of us. Matthew 4 talks about this time. Matthew 4 and 16. The people which sat in darkness have seen a great light, and to them which sat in the region of the shadow of death, Light has sprung up or is sprung up. That's in Jesus, fulfilled in Jesus. And, you know, as we read in John 3, and we'll, we'll go there in a second, but uh, in John 3, we see all about, unless you're born again of water and of the Spirit, you will not enter the kingdom of God. It also says God loved the world. He loves us with a very everlasting love. He wants each and every one to come and acknowledge Jesus Christ and listen and adhere to everything he said. So we will get baptized. We will receive the Holy Spirit because Jesus said so. However, we know that there are going to be people that, um, that might love darkness, as it says in John 3.19. You go past all of that in John 3.19. 
This is the condemnation, that light is come into the world, and men love darkness rather than the light because their deeds were evil. You know, it's Miguel was saying, I don't know why you were out riding your bike at 1030 at night, but, uh, you know, but that, that's the problem is when you're in darkness, Miguel, you know, I know somebody watching this on YouTube is going to wonder what we're talking about. But Miguel gave a testimony about riding his bike in darkness. And so if you love the darkness, then you might think nobody's going to see it. You know, and people that stay up late at night, they like darkness. You know, maybe nobody's going to notice. Catch me. But the light has come to bear witness to the evil deeds and to call people to account. Now, there is a point where we can no longer play both sides of the fence. We are, now, everybody here, people on Zoom, we've made the choice. You can get in the game and serve the Lord. Get in the game and serve the Lord. All right? The great soccer match is about to begin, and you've got to play hard to win. Score the goal. Protect the goal if you're uh, Togro is the goalkeeper. So he'll stand in the goal and... We'll put him in goal. He's, he's big and tall. Imagine me as a goalkeeper. It'd be like, no chance. They'd score a lot of goals. But we'll put Togro in, and uh, and he'll make the save. Right? You know, we used to have a joke in Canada. Uh, Jesus saves, but Gretzky gets the rebound. And anyway... Gretzky was a hockey player, Anthony. Yeah, okay. So, anyway, the whole point is there is a lot of good and it's a lot of fun to be in the Lord. And, and that's the thing. I, I, I hate coming up here and giving all these doom and gloom. And, you know, I mean, when I saw the news, I was just thinking of Togro thinking this must be hard on you right now as you watch and you look and you go, wow, you know, you were just living right there and then all of this is going on, and but yet you're here. So praise God, we, we welcome you here and we pray for your family. Uh, I think of the other people that we've met, Anastasia escaping from the Ukraine uh, to get to where she is. And, and I just think of, of all of the, the people there. You're sitting there in your apartment and suddenly it's getting blown up. Okay? It's, uh, it is a tough time and we need to be mindful of that. But it is really beautiful and wonderful and we should embrace the things of the Lord and be very humble and very grateful that we are here. And in moments like that, when we look around and go, Wow, okay, we're able to sit in a building and not worry that secret police are going to come in and arrest us. Can you imagine? Some people live with that fear. Can you imagine that in some places, a meeting like this, forget about the secret police, other people could come in and, and take you captive, put the gun to your head or the knife to your throat and say, deny Jesus. We're very blessed here. We are very blessed. So we've got to get going on and, and be really humble as we serve the Lord and share that with others. All right. And as I said, it is all good. It is always good. With God, it is always good. It is always better, no matter what you are going through. We've all had our moments, and we have to remember that. It's not all doom and gloom, okay? Because our team wins. Luke 1, 78. Luke 1, 78. Through the tender mercy of our God, 
whereby the day spring from on high hath visited us. In case you're wondering, that's Jesus. To give light to them that sit in darkness and in the shadow of death to guide your feet into the way of peace. You're riding on a bicycle at 1030 at night and a motorcycle comes and you are rescued miraculously. Fulfilled right there in that scripture. Amen. And we had our brother testify of that. Hallelujah. And share that testimony with others and encourage them that now is the time to come to the Lord. There go I, but by the grace of God, that could be us that are in that situation. Now is the time to come to the Lord. Now is the time to get off the fence. Now is the time to commit everything we have and everything we offer unto God. Amen. John 8, 12 is uh, one that uh, we have probably heard. Maybe some people have this scripture on your fridge, on a, in, a, in a picture on your Bible. It says, and Jesus spake again unto them, saying, I am the light of the world. He that followeth after me shall not walk in darkness, but shall have the light of life. Amen to that. Life. Light. Amen. Praise God. John 12, 46. I am come a light into the world, that whosoever believeth on me should not abide in darkness. Again, that's it. It sounds so simple. Except, as I pointed out, life isn't always milk and cookies in the Lord. You don't always get the ice cream or the piece of cake. Sometimes there are going to be trials. But I will tell you this from experience. How much better is it to be in the Lord when you have a challenge that immediately when our sister Angie goes into the hospital that we could have so many people praying. And then this morning to hear her laugh on the phone as she was sitting in her hospital bed recovering, uh, how she missed being here at church today. So we'll go to the hospital afterwards uh, and, uh, uh, and we will have a second meeting there. Okay. Or something. We'll do something. Or maybe we'll stop at Subway, Anthony. All right. So these are the things that we can do in the Lord. Ephesians 5 8. Ephesians 5 8. Okay. For ye were sometimes darkness. And, you know, I think it's a bit humbling for some people to admit that we've had our moments. Nobody's perfect. We've made mistakes. But now you are light. Or are ye light, as it says in the old English. In the Lord, walk as children of the light. Walk. As children of the light, we've got to walk in light. That would be that. Forget that hiding out and sneaking around and, and all the rest of it. We are in the light. And we know that the Son of Righteousness has come with healing in his wings. Malachi 4 2 says that. Malachi 4 2. But unto you that fear my name shall the Son of Righteousness arise. With healing in his wings. Healing. Spiritual healing. And physical healing. And you shall go forth and grow as calves in the stall. And, you know, there was a saying, and certainly when you are in fellowship and for pastors... If you don't have any calves in the barn, it's easy to keep the barn clean. If we don't have anybody in fellowship around us, then maybe it's easy to keep things clean. When we have a fellowship, then, you know, 
Sometimes we have to step out and serve a bit more, be there for one another, right? So we've got the Lord of righteousness that has come to us to give us the light. Now we've got to go share that with others. And we've got to grow up as the calves and then eventually help out with the cleanup, right? We'll get babes in the Lord that will come along. They'll make mistakes. We'll get other people that will come along and, uh, and have a little bit of a struggle, have a little bit of a trial, have a little bit of a drama. And, you know, it might not be easy. You might come home or you might have something going on and it might require you to step out a bit, to step out in faith and be there. I don't want to. I'm kind of tired. I've had a hard day. Well, get over it. Pray about it and be there to serve one another. The Lord has done so much for each and every one of us that it's it's incumbent on us uh, to be there and, and to step out. Okay? All right? That's not by condemnation. We've got a really good uh, group here, but I think it is important for learning to understand that, that each and every one of us uh, it needs to be there for one another. Okay? And, of course, the ultimate light is going to be when the Lord returns. The Lord returns. We can read through the whole of Revelation 21, if you want to turn to it. Revelation 21. And you can read in verse 23. The beautiful day that is coming. This is the end. This is the end. The city had no need of the sun, neither of the moon to shine in it, for the glory of God did lighten it, and the Lamb is the light thereof. Who's the Lamb? The Lamb is Jesus. The Lamb is Jesus. And we'll finish off in Revelation 22 and in verse 5. And there shall be no night there, and they need no candle, neither light of the sun. For the Lord God giveth them light, and they shall reign forever and ever. So it's a world without end. It is a time rejoicing, time together. Yeah, we're going to grow old. Yes, we will get aches and pains. Yes. We will have some things that we will have to deal with. But the Lord is going to lift that burden for us and give us strength. The brothers and sisters around us are going to give us the strength. So let's be enlightened today. Let's share this message with others. And we'll end it there. All the people said.